come before you now. We thank you for giving us this service this morning, for living in a country that we have the ability to worship. Amen. We ask that you be with David this morning. You give him ready recollection of the words that you've given him and that we might be drawn closer to you. In Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. It's so good that all you can be here today. Uh, like I said at the beginning, you came at a good time. If you're visiting today, as we have a good potluck. And so uh, all of you are invited to come to that. It doesn't matter if you brought something or not. Just come and fellowship with us. We'd love to get to know you. If you're looking for a church home, then your search is over. We'd love to have you here and be part of our church family. Love you so much. Well, we're reading through the Bible this year. And so we read through Joshua the last couple of weeks. And so I want to talk about a story of that. There's so much to talk about in Joshua. But I want to talk about this right here. Now, David, just to let you know, uh, our kids are trained pretty well. When they come up to give them money, they go straight down the way. Uh, my daughter, as she was walking down, she, she looked at me and said, that was so weird. <laughs> and so, I, I tell you, it's good to be trained in the right ways, isn't it? And so that's why we, we work on our kids and train them the right way so when they get older, they know which way to go. Amen. And so just want to look at this. That's Jericho. Well... A facsimile, fac, facsimile of it. Now, it's known as a palm tree city. Did you know that? Uh, because there was always a lot of palm trees around there. That's one reason why they built Jericho there. Because, so it's a city of palm trees. And that's why you had that little palm tree right there. It looks like something that you may build in Minecraft. But, but that's a little uh, city of Jericho. And so there's so much here that we can learn from. This happened. And sometimes when we grow up hearing these stories as kids and, and we learn about it, we get so used to it, it loses its power on us. But this actually happened. This city tumbled down. And I want us to look at it and just get a reappreciation of it and then get a good message here from it. Of course, we have the fill-in-the-blank on the back of the order of worship, or you could go to the YouVersion app there and do the fill-in-the-blanks there. And so Joshua was selected by God and trained by Moses. In Numbers 27, 18 to, 18 to 20, God told Moses, and choose Joshua, the son of Nun, to be your successor. Isn't that special? Now, Moses was working on Joshua over time, but it was God who selected Joshua. Isn't that special? Wouldn't it be special if God chose you for a certain job? And I'm going to choose Alan, son of, what's your dad's name again? Son of Jerry, to do this or that. What a special feeling. I'm sure Alan's feeling a special feeling right now. I, I tell you what, and, and so this was a huge honor to be selected by God. And he was told numerous times to be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. And I appreciate Gerald reading that passage this morning. God told him, be strong and courageous and do not be afraid. Now, as you can imagine, usually you're told not to be afraid when you're about to do something to be fearful. Have you ever been mowing and you saw a snake? Well, I tell you what, about three weeks ago, I was, you know, springtime starting to happen and everything, everything's coming to life. I was, went to open my shed doors and there was a snake skin about that long in front of it. And I took that and showed it to my wife and my mother in law that hadn't seen that before. It was like, oh, how big is it? I said, a little bit bigger than this. <laughs> And they said, oh, no. He says, well, don't be worried. And I thought about this passage. You only tell someone, don't worry, when there's something to be worried about. <coughs> right? They say, hey, we're going to go to your favorite restaurant. And don't worry. Of course not. That's not a fearful situation. And so when Joshua heard this, he had to soothe himself. Okay. I'm about to lead a few million people in multiple battles over years I'm a little worried. And Joshua, like I talked about Moses, he was about 120 when this was all happening, when uh, his time came. Joshua is not a 20-year-old at this time. 
How old do you think Joshua was when he was sent in to spy the first time? Maybe about 30? Because they would have chosen leaders, right? And so he was probably 70, 80 years old at this time. And he's going to lead all these people into war for a long time. So typically when you think of Joshua as the warrior leader, you think about this guy, maybe about 40, come on! But he's about 80 years old, come on! <laughs> and so he might have been tempted to be fearful about what's going on. And God knew that. So he told him in Numbers and Joshua, consistently, don't be afraid. And there in verse 5, it says, no one can stand up to you as long as I'm with you. So powerful, so amazing. Well, it's go time. Jo Joshua had been through the desert for 40 years, and they're about to start the, the campaign right now. Now, between chapter 1 and chapter 6, where we read about Jericho, they crossed the Jordan River. All right? Amazing happens. We don't have time to get into that there. But Joshua was having to take steps of faith all along the way. Jericho wasn't his first step of faith. It was the next step of faith. Joshua had gone up with Moses to Mount Sinai. He had gone with Moses before the people. And he stepped across the Jordan River. So you may think, how could Joshua do this with Jericho? Like David, God led him on the path of multiple times of trusting him to build him up to this moment of Jericho. So J Joshua, chapter 2, verse 1, Then Joshua the son of Nun sent two men as spies secretly from Shittim, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho, so they went and came into the house of a harlot whose name was Rahab and lies there. So Joshua now is getting ready to go in. So Rahab the harlot. Isn't that nice to be known that for thousands of years? Rahab the harlot. And from then on, that's where she was known as. Now, if you don't know the term harlot, ask your parents. But, and so she was this lady who had made a lot of mistakes in her past. But when it came to go time, she made the right decision. And I like that. In Joshua 2, 12 through 14, just to remind you what Rahab did, the men there were coming to get the, the spies. They heard about it. I don't know how they heard about it. And someone had said they're in the house of Rahab. But she hit them. Hit him up in the loft. And this is what happened. Now therefore, please swear to me by the Lord, since I have dealt kindly with you, that you also would deal kindly with my father's household. And give me a pledge of truth, and spare my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters, with all who belong to them. And deliver our lives from death. So, that men, so the men said to her, Our life for yours. If you do not tell this business of ours... And it shall come about when the Lord gives us the land that we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. So Rahab was very wise and took advantage of the situation. Help these two men to be saved. And says, save me as well. Now you may think, well that's not nice. You just did something kind. Don't ask something back. But it's good to, isn't it? When your life is in the balance, you do it. And I love this about Rahab, Rahab the harlot. Look at this. In Matthew 1, 5, Salmon was the father of Boaz by Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse. And of course, Jesse was the father of David. This is the lineage of Christ. Rahab the harlot in the lineage of Jesus Christ our Savior. Now, I think a lot of people, when they were thinking, okay, let's pick the, who's going to be the lineage of Jesus, looking at the time frame. Let's pick the best people, most popular. Rahab? What? No, 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 no. God, I understand what you're trying to do. You want to include all people, but not Rahab? 
Why would God include Rahab in the lineage of his son Jesus? Rahab showed great faith, didn't she? God wasn't even her God. And she put her trust in him. That's the kind of faith that he wanted in the lineage of his son. People that had faith in him and put his trust in him. So I love that. Rahab turned her life around in that moment. Life of being a harlot, her past, now became Rahab the savior of those two people and helper of God's people. And later in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Amazing. I love that story. I love that idea. So coming back to here, Jericho. Look at this. This is how we think the, the, the city looked. So we talked about the walls. It was actually a two-walled city. All right? You had that outer wall. That was that first line of defense. And then you had the inner wall. Each one of those walls were about 15 feet high. Okay? And so when... Uh, and that inner area is about six to nine acres. Because we think we know the area. So not tremendously large. And probably about uh, 1,500 people would live in there at that time. But they had gathered everybody in. So everybody in the area of the area of Jericho, Jericho was the capital of the Jericho area, they all came in. So there was many thousands of people in this area now. Now where do you think Rahab's uh, house was? You see that down here? In between the two walls. Okay? Over here someplace in between the two walls is probably where her place was. Now I think if you were going to buy a place here, the cheaper place would be over here, in between the two walls. Why? That would be the place that's going to be taken over first. That's the first line of defense. And apparently her place was on that outer wall. Because that's where they placed the, the scarlet cord, right? Where they get out of, or, and they, as a sign, where she was. And so Rahab was... Uh, she could see the people of God and see how large they were. So she knew what was at stake with her life. Now chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. Now the German archaeology team in the early 1900s went there and they found the place of Jericho and they found uh, great pots with grain still in it. But it was burned. It had been fired. And because when the city was destroyed, they burned it. And so they found the area, which is amazing to me, they still had pots there of grain that hadn't been used. And they found that there in the early 1900s. Amazing to me. And they haven't built, there is an, a, a town called Jericho now in that area. But it's not on the exact same place. What's happened a lot. When a town got completely devastated, they may build it again, but not in the exact same place because it was so desolate. Okay? So they rebuilt Jericho, but to the side. But nothing was built there ever again. This is amazing to think about. So Joshua 5, 13 to 14, right before that, says, Now it came about when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes this 80-year-old man, and looked, and behold, a man was standing opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And I love his response. No. <laughs> Rather, I indeed come now as captain of the host of the Lord. So Joshua asked this captain of the army of God, says, Are you for us or against us? Neither. I'm for God. Oh my. <laughs> well, if you're Joshua at that time, he says, I want to be on your side then. The angels know what side they're on. They're always on the side of God. And if you're on God's side, then you're on their side. So I love that simple answer. No. I'm God's military man. Saying, if you want me to be your military man, 
than be with God. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, sometimes people think they, they get God trapped. It's like, okay, God, I put my faith in you. I got baptized. Now, you have to save me. Yeah, I don't go to church. I don't live the way I need to. But you have to do what I say. And maybe Joshua was thinking this in a way. He's like, oh, you're here to, to help us, to serve us. He's like, no, I serve God. And we need to remember that. We need to keep right with God. So the solution here was march around the city. And he, he asked for all the men that were the warriors to do this. So I want to ask you something. Will all the men stand up? All the men, your warrior men? And uh, let's walk to the side here. And I want us to walk around all the pews here. Yeah? Let's walk around the pews here. Now, I don't have a trumpet to blow. Uh, we'll, we'll go uh, this way. Right here. We'll just walk around. Yeah, I hope the building doesn't fall down. So, If it does, the walls will fall inside here. Now, they would do this for six days. Six days, they would do this one time a day. And on the seventh day, they did this six times. Now, what were the people in Jericho thinking about this as they saw this? What do you think? What are those guys doing? Now, they were told to be quiet. They walked around. As they walked around one time. All right, once you make your path around, you can go back and sit down. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. I thought maybe there was a chance no one would stand up. <laughs> but isn't that something? I'm sure the people in, inside Jericho, as they saw that, they didn't say anything rude. I'm sure they didn't say anything mean, like, what are you fools doing? Walking around. You see how big our walls are? And I wonder what the, the Israelites thought about that. I wonder what they thought about that. What are we doing walking around the walls? You know, they walked around with the ark. They had seven priests with horns. They had the ark there. And they had the men, the warrior men, walking around. Why would God have them do that? Do that. Now, I'm sure some made fun of them as they walked around. But I'm sure it was also intimidating as well. As you saw all those people walking around with the seven priests doing horns. And the seventh day it fell. And they saved Rahab. But I'm sure it had to be tempting for some of the men going, this is so silly, I'm not going to do it. How many of you felt that way a little bit just walking around? I've never done anything like this in church before. <laughs> walking around? I've gone up and walked out of church before, but not like this. <laughs> and maybe God asks you to do something that you're not used to. Or have you said, no, okay, God, if you ask me to do anything, here's a list of things that I'm willing for you to ask me to do. You can ask me to do anything on this list. That's how committed I am to you, God. Ask me to do anything on this list. Because I love you so much. You're God of my life on this list. God enjoyed asking his people to do things that was counterintuitive. I want you guys to walk through the Red Sea. I want you to throw a tree in that water and make it sweet. I want you to go out every morning and gather bread on the ground. God did things constantly. Are you going to trust me? It doesn't make sense to you. Are you going to trust me? Am I really your God? I love that he did that. And earlier, at the end of Joshua chapter 1, when Joshua was claiming that place of leadership... The men said, we will follow you and put to death anybody who goes against you 
as long as you follow God. And those are the walls right there now. That's part of the Jericho area right there, a picture that was taken there. Isn't that amazing? So the victory. They didn't have to fight any. I imagine they said, we did it! It's so amazing! We defeated Jericho that we were so afraid of. Our dads and, and grandparents that were so afraid, they're all dead now. They died in the, in the wilderness because they didn't believe. And we did it. We didn't lose one person. And we defeated mighty Jericho. They were so big and so strong. The excitement had to be off the charts. I don't think they understood what was going to happen exactly. Rahab had to be terrified. Because <laughs> Rahab was there while the walls were falling down. And talking about the archaeologists from Germany that went there... They noticed at that time, part of the wall, outside wall, only one part hadn't been torn down. They think that's where Rahab and her family was. So not possible, or well, what a coincidence, right? That's what the world would say. What a coincidence that that happened. God's a miracle worker, isn't he? He loves to show how mighty he is. So I imagine they put their faith in Joshua. Joshua, what a great leader you are. We did it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. Now this is what people that don't believe God and understand God very well, they say, Joshua, how popular you are. You're amazing. Joshua understood, though, didn't he? He knew it wasn't we did it. He knew... God did it. Now this is the temptation that we fall into. Great things happen. We may get over there to potluck and look at all the food. We did it! <laughs> look at all this great food. But when we have success, we move over here to this building. People are being saved. We want to do uh, mission work in other parts of the world. It's easy to say, we did it! Look how great we are. But that's not true, is it? It's God who does it all. Joshua and the Israelites understood. They had just walked over the Jordan and went dried up as soon as the priest's foot touched the water. They understand that it was God that did it. Now, I believe one of the reasons why God did it that way is because everybody that was in Egypt before had died. Who's left to remember the, the ten plagues? Pretty much just Joshua and Caleb. That was all. Everybody else died. That's why they had been in the wilderness. God was punishing them for the lack of faith 40 years before. In 1 Corinthians 1, 27, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. God has done this for all of time. He did it here in Jericho. How was he going to defeat mighty Jericho? I'll just walk around it. I'll take care of it. I'll tell you what. It's tempting when you have a Jericho moment in your life. God says, I want you to do this. And you're looking at how big the walls are, how big the people are in the situation. And God's going, hey, Look at me. When you have this great challenge, don't look at the walls. Don't look at the people. Look at me. God is going to ask you to march around to Jericho. God is going to ask you to do something that makes no sense whatsoever, but you can tell us from God. He will speak to your spirit. He'll make it so evident in your life to speak to somebody, to do something. And to you, it's like, this isn't possible. No, for you, it's not, okay? For you, it's not. But for God, all things are possible, like he told Mary. With God, all things are possible. The question is, are you going to march? I appreciate all you that walked around with me. And I imagine that was bonding for the Israelites, too. Because as they did that, they were saying to each other, I believe God's going to do something amazing. 
I don't know what we're doing. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but God asks us to do it. We're going to do it. That's how it needs to be with us. As we have these Jericho moments come in our life, if God's asked me to do it, then I'm doing it. I don't need to understand. And we're in a society that we like to understand everything, right? We call that being wise. Making sure we understand every little step. If you can, great. But if you can't, and God's asked you to do it, then you need to march. March. People are going to mock you and make fun of you like they did from the walls, I'm sure. I'm sure by day four, they're going, oh, you're walking again? Great! Got some water here. It's great. People are going to mock and make fun of you. Are you going to march? It's going to seem to be impossible. But you know, not for God. But everybody's saying it's impossible. Are you going to march? Joshua 1, 5 through 9. I just want to read this again. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I would not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right, to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Isn't that a great message for us today? God is with you. Whatever Jericho that may be before you or before us as a church family, don't be afraid. God is with us. You put your faith in Jesus. You do everything He says. This morning in class, I talked about being adopted, sons of God. As we call out to God, Father, Abba. This is the adoption process that God has given us. Getting baptized, coming to God, being adopted, saying, God, just tell me where you want me to march. And because of you, I'll do it. If that speaks to you, if you need to respond to it and come to God, we'd love to be your church family. Or if you need to get back to God, then take advantage of this opportunity as David leads us in this song.